In the second to last episode of Bojack Horseman, the view from halfway down, it appears that Bojack is going to die. His brain is losing functionality, sending him through a series of nightmarish, wild fever dreams. He's thrown through his anxieties and forced to confront the extent to which he has not really changed. My favorite of these segments involves Sarah Lynn, Bojack's troubled ex-co-star to whom he served as a sort of surrogate parent, and instead of providing her with guidance and good advice, he failed utterly, and the state that she's in is, while not wholly his fault, it certainly is significantly his fault. He is not wrong to blame himself for the role he played in her downward spiral. He should have been there for her. Instead, he was, if anything, a corrupting influence. This is especially evident in the role he plays in her death. She comes back to haunt him in The View from Halfway Down, performing a mordant song despite his pleas for her to forgive him. This episode is an unending cascade of terrors. It's not hard to think that waiting at the bottom of all this chaos is death itself. Death would be a fitting ending for Bojack. He's a failure. While he is not entirely without redeeming qualities, and he is not entirely incapable of doing the right thing if the opportunity to do so presents itself, he is not able to overcome his worst impulses. He's not able to take responsibility for the damage he has caused. Change is hard. It requires honest introspection, it requires looking at the worst parts of yourself and not blinking or making excuses for your behavior. Bojack, despite his redeeming qualities, is not able to do this, and it appears that the punishment for this is going to be the end of his life. But the show does not do this, and I find that fascinating for what it suggests concerning the show's attitudes about redemption, failure, and trauma. The show's final episode, Nice While It Lasted, is a sort of formal antithesis to The View From Halfway Down. While The View From Halfway Down is a dramatic, bombastic visual experiment, the kind for which the show became well known during its third and fourth seasons, Nice While It Lasted is much more straightforward. It's an episode Bojack spends in conversation with others. Unlike the previous episode, in which bad things happened to Bojack and he was stuck in the passenger seat, forced to watch it all unfold and unable to do anything to stop it, he is much more of an active participant in this episode. While both episodes feature Bojack increasingly isolated from those around him, the finale is a little more hopeful, at least ostensibly so. There's a glint of a possibility that Bojack could redeem himself in the future. Maybe the long arc of his life does bend toward confrontation with his worst impulses. In some ways, the differences between these two episodes are not all that dissimilar from the differences between Ozymandias, the third to last episode of Breaking Bad, and Felina, the finale of Breaking Bad. There are two different endings. Ozymandias is the nadir of the show. It's where Walter White is finally forced to confront the damages his actions have caused. It reminds us, perhaps more bluntly than any other episode, that he is the villain of the show. Is he the worst character, necessarily? Maybe not. I mean, season 5 has literal Nazis. 
but he is the character whose actions have caused the most damage to the lives of other characters. Even though he acts like he did what he did to protect his family, in reality, he destroyed his family. Ozymandias is the episode in which he realizes that everything he did cannot be undone. The damage is permanent. Whereas Felina, the show's finale, manages to provide a little hope in the midst of the darkness. While he does die in this episode, it is not a wholly depressing death, as he saves Jesse and comes to terms with who he really is. It's not a triumphant ending, despite what some think, but it is a more optimistic ending. It suggests that his life was not a complete waste. However, despite the similarities between the ending of Breaking Bad and the ending of BoJack, I increasingly realize that the comparison only goes so far. Even though both finales are a little bit more optimistic than the episodes that preceded them, Felina, the Breaking Bad finale, provided Walt with a sense of closure, whereas the finale of BoJack emphatically denies that sense of closure to its protagonist. This makes all the difference in the world. Strangely, death secures Walt's legacy in a way. He may have been a terrible person, but he died doing what he was passionate about, and he died on his own terms. Bojack is not so lucky. He has to keep on living. His legacy is his to define, which is both the most optimistic thing in the world and the most terrifying thing in the world. He's not Tony Soprano, someone doomed to repeat the same patterns, someone doomed to never escape the vice grip holding him in the mob life because of innate flaws that he cannot find it in himself to overcome. There is a possibility that he could become the person he has been trying to become in the last few seasons, but that possibility is increasingly a fraction of what it was, in part because all the people he cares about have more or less abandoned him. And I have to defend them. I can't really blame them at all. There are only so many times you can hear, I'm going to be better. This is going to be the time I get it right. I'm sorry for what I did before, but it's not going to be like that this time. I may have failed you before, but tomorrow is going to be different. There's only so many times you can hear that before you start believing that this person is a lost cause. The longer I meditate on Bojack's ending, the less I'm convinced that the finale is actually more optimistic than the episodes preceding it. There's a flicker of hope, sure, but accompanying that flicker is a burden. If you're dead, the game's over. It's tragic and somber, but it's also liberating. There's nothing else you need to do. You no longer have to confront the iniquities of a cruel world, not to mention your own flaws and the struggles innate to trying to overcome those flaws. As the saying goes, dying is easy, living is harder. How do you wake up in the morning? knowing that the world will never be as it should be, knowing that everyone who cared about you is dead, and those who aren't dead think of you as a total lost cause. It's something Bojack is going to have to figure out for himself. Unlike Bojack, his friends are mostly able to move on. Their lives are far from perfect, and they're constantly attacked by traumas, they will never be able to overcome these tragic memories that keep on plaguing them. But they have escaped the quagmire. They've escaped its doom and hardship. Bojack cannot. He's genuinely sorry about what he has done wrong. He's capable of immense introspection. While he is egotistical, he does not have a desire to be a all-powerful ruler like Walter White. Unlike Tony Soprano, there are things more important to him than money and status. 
Unlike Don Draper, he recognizes the hollowness of certain signifiers of success. And he doesn't yearn to replace them with different but equally hollow images. It's possible that Bojack could climb out of the pit trapping him. There's hope that it is not impossible. But doing so would require more effort and commitment than he has proven willing to provide thus far. And even if he succeeds, those bonds are still going to be broken. His friends are not instantly going to start supporting him again. And even if they did, it's not like Sarah Lynn is going to magically be resurrected. This is why, I believe, the writers of BoJack Horseman chose to end the series as they did. It's not letting him off the hook, as some have posited. In reality, it's quite the opposite. If he died, you could look at his life as some grand literary tragedy. But a tragedy without an ending is just a journey, and Bojack's is hard and long and nowhere near finished. A character's ending should fit their actions, it should fit their wants and desires, as Bojack's does. That Bojack lives means he must continue to suffer the burden of the one challenge he has never been able to overcome. That being taking responsibility for his actions, and the effect of those actions on others. It's a fitting fate for him. So thank you for watching. If you liked what you saw today, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Donate to my Patreon if you can, and you want to see more videos like this. I'm so sad that BoJack is ending. It really was one of the best shows on television, animated or otherwise. And, uh... Yeah, it'll leave a hole that might never be replaced. But it got the ending it deserved. So it's really hard to complain too much about that. Anyway, tune in soon for my next analysis. It will be coming soon. Thank you all again. Adios, comrades.